Everybody, can we stand up? Can you look at your friend and say, God bless you? Amen. Now, there's a way we do it. You know that everybody in this auditorium is already blessed. Is it true? Now, look at that person and say to him or her, remain blessed. Because coming to somebody that is blessed and saying God bless you, you are now trying to say as if God is not real. But when you say to somebody remain blessed, that person is upholding what God has done. So look at that fine face closer to you. Say to that person remain blessed. Remain blessed. Say it louder. Remain say it again. Say it louder. Amen. And everybody say amen. amen. Before we pray and hear the word, as we are standing up, I want to thank the leadership of Apostolic Coalition and also the leadership of women. One thing I like here is that every year we come to this place by August we see something different. This auditorium keeps changing every year. Last year we were preaching with this, but this year we are preaching with this. Last year there was a curtain here. This year the curtain has been removed. Can you put your hands together for the Lord? So many things keep changing here to the glory of God. Last year, there was no medical attention. But this year, there have been medical attention from Tuesday till now. And it will end tomorrow. These are good innovations. Can you put your hands together for the Lord? When God is doing his work, it is always from glory to glory. You are as if you didn't eat this afternoon. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? It's always from glory to glory. And also, the best of it, last year when I stood here, I told you, I back came with one bus last year. One. But this year, we came with over three or four vehicles. More than any other group from anywhere. Next year, we will come with over six vehicles. Because I believe no matter the situation, overtaking is allowed. So sometime, we may take over from Barrister. Elekwachi, we may take over from Barrister Bere. We may take over from Aneke. We may take over even from Venerable himself. Because overtaking is allowed. Tell your neighbor overtaking is allowed. And say to your neighbor, if you don't take your time, I will overtake you. Say it louder. Say it again. Say it lastly. If you don't take your time, I will overtake all of you. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. It's good to overtake in good ground. Amen. Not in evil. Yes. So we are very, very happy that at least this year, we came with two big buses from Aba and one Siena and the two uh, other vehicles. That's a lovely one. And we also want to thank this organization for coming to Aba last July. The impact of your meeting was great. We are happy. Um, we want to thank Venerable. We want to thank uh, the assistant and uh, Ebere and the others that came. It was a great meeting. It was awesome. And one thing, one good result of that meeting is seeing this our elderly bishop, one of the founders of the church in Abba. I never believed that our papa here would be in this meeting. He is one of the founding fathers of Christianity. 
people that touched the city of Abba right from early 70s till now. If this our father can leave everything to be here, that has to say that the impact of that meeting last July was great. Papa, we are very, very grateful. Can you put your hands together? And all the people from Abia State, can you shout hallelujah? Are you serious? So now they big like that. All the people from Abia State, shout hallelujah. Anambra, have you seen it? Overtaking is allowed. Okay, Anambra, shout hallelujah. Your hallelujah is like woman hallelujah. Abia state hallelujah is like men hallelujah. If you go to a church, men shout hallelujah is different. Abash, can you shout hallelujah? Ununanukwa <laughs> base. <laughs> to God be the glory, something is happening. We are very, very grateful. So these men are almost from Abba. And when men from Abba come to a meeting, wise men have come. Wise men have come. So there's no going back. The network is working. May God bless all of us. We thank Venerable for this vision. We pray that God will sustain this vision in Jesus' name. We bless your name, O oh God, for this opportunity to speak to your congregation, to speak to your servants, to minister to all of us. Father, I pray that you use me, O oh God, to encourage my people. Use me, O oh God, to bless my people. Use me, O oh God, to advance the gospel. At the end, your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you sit down? I want to continue from where others stopped. To the glory of God, we've been talking about the manifestations of the sons of God in this great meeting. The manifestation of the God, sons of God. And I believe that every son of God in this meeting, before we end up on Sunday evening, there's going to be a mighty manifestation in Jesus' name. Amen. And another thing that touches me is, I did not hear about the manifestation of the daughters of God. Meaning that there is no daughter in the kingdom. Everybody, whether you are in skate or in rapper, whether you are on trouser or whatever, you are part of the sons of God. Whether you are a woman or a man, you are part of the sons of God. And I want you to look at yourself and say, I am a son. Say it like you are alive. Say it louder. Those in overflow, say it louder over there. And those in the auditorium, say it, I am a son. It does not matter what I'm wearing. Say, it does not matter what I'm wearing. I am a full son in the kingdom. Amen. Benefit of good service as a son. Benefit of good service as a son is what I'm speaking about. Benefit of good service as a son. Not every work has a benefit. But when a son is serving, when a son has come to serve, there is benefit. I pray that within this period, your service in this auditorium, your service in women, your service wherever you belong to, your service in the kingdom of God will come with a special benefit in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you open the Bible, Second Samuel chapter 6? One to four. Can you just flash it for me? Second Samuel chapter six, one to four. Benefit of good service as a son. Benefit of good service in the things of God. Chapter one. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand two and three. 
David gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubs, cherubims. And they set the ark of God a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzziah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. I don't know if I'm to ask you to close your Bible. Can you give me the last verse, verse 4? And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at the Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God, and Ahio went before the ark. Everybody say amen. Um, if time will allow me, I'm going to mention five names so that will be prominent in the benefit of this service. Um, among the five names, we are going to meet a man called Abinadab, and we are going to meet a man called Ahio, another one called Uzziah. Then we are going to meet a man called David, the fourth person. Then we are going to meet in between another one called Eliezer. Then we are going to meet the last one that is hidden. And that will be among the last names we are going to mention. And I will keep that one pending. Benefit of good service as a son. And I want to say it this afternoon, categorically here, every person that have come to serve God, you should have something in mind. I say it again, anyone that has risen, that has come up to serve God, you must have something in mind. One, at the end of my service here on earth, I will inherit the kingdom of God. Then, physically, while I am serving God, God is going to bless me. Any service that has no reward is not a service. Can everybody hear me? Any duty that is not attached with any reward is not a duty. Any duty that is not attached with reward is never a duty. Any service that is not attached with benefit just run away from that particular place. No wonder a lot of people ask when you tell them that there will be something to do, they would ask you what will be my benefit at the end of this service. When you are employing somebody, one of the benefits you discuss with that person is your monthly salary, your monthly wage, and the other benefits that follows. Then at a point in the history of Israel, Bible said in First uh, Samuel chapter 6 verse 1, and David gathered 30,000 men. I am just still wondering what 30,000 men were going to do. Venerable, you have studied and studied. 30,000 men going to bring one thing. That thing must be a thing of honor. That thing must be a thing that has a respect and a regard. 30,000 men, not youths. Can everybody hear me now? He did not gather youths. He did not gather women. He gathered 30,000 men. And I want to say that in Oka as a whole, as a city, there's no ground in Oka that will contain 30,000 people. Because I don't know if you have a stadium. Even if you have, there's no stadium, no podium in Oka that will gather 30,000 men. No field in Oka that will gather 30,000 men, not sitting, standing, because sitting takes more space. Then there's no auditorium in church wise in Oka as a whole that will gather 30,000 men. I'm not sure if there's anyone in Onisha that can gather 30,000 men or sit. 30,000 men. Because in the whole of Abba, there's no auditorium that can see 20,000 people. But David was able to gather 30,000 men. Men of value. Men of war. Men of strength. 
to go and bring the ark of God. What a wonderful work. And he gathered them and set them in array according to their levels. According to their positions. He made sure that the singers were ahead and another group were following. Others were following. Others were following. Until he came to where the king was. Because I believe that the king was at the middle of the 30,000. And when the king was at the center of the 30,000, there were another five, about 500 men, not among the 5,000 that were guiding the king. These were guides to the king. They have set out what was their mission, what their commission, to go and bring the ark of God from where it has been. And the ark of God, ladies and gentlemen, has been in the house of a man called Abinadab for many years. And Abinadab has happened to have three sons. Number one is Eliezer, who was not mentioned here. Number two was Ahio, and another one was Uzziah. When David set out, he was going to the house of Abinadab to bring the ark of God so that every Israelite will know that the ark of God is coming back to the city of Jerusalem, uh, David, which was in Jerusalem. And when the ark of God is coming back to the city of David, which was in Jerusalem, it's going to be very, very joyful. And everybody will rejoice because at the ark that traveled to the city of Philist to the country of Philistia, has stayed there for a long time, and they caused havoc and panic in Philistia, and the Philistia brought it into the territory of Israelite. They did not come into the city, country of Israel. They had to drop it at the border. When they dropped it at the border, they handed it over to the people that were living around the border territory and said, take your problem and go. And the people in the border territory have to push the ark into the house of Abinadab, who was supposed to be a priest, and he was. And Abinadab had nothing in mind. He had the mind of serving God. But he has to consecrate one of his sons, called Eliezer, to be after the ark. And Eliezer was looking after the ark all the years. But something unfortunate happened. Everybody says something unfortunate. Say with me, something unfortunate. Can you give me verse 5, 6, 7? Verse 5, 6, 7. Verse 5. And David and all the household of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fine wood, even of harp, and on samistries and on tambourines and on cornets and on cymbals seas. And when they came to the natural stretching floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the earth shook it. Verse 7. And the anger of the Lord was kindled as against Uzziah, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. Verse 8. And David was displeased because the ark of God made a bridge upon Uzziah. And he called the name of that place Perosiah today. Can you give me, help me, verse 9. And David was afraid of the ark that day and said, how shall the ark of God come to me anymore? Everyone look at me now. And David was not happy that day. And he said, how can the ark of God, this killing thing, this thing that I've started destroying, how can it come to me anymore? May God have mercy in Jesus' name. Before you judge, find out what happened. David was not against Oza. Neither was he against Ohio. Neither was he against Abinadab. He was against God. Because he thought that God has met something that displeased him. But God has been innocent and just. I don't know if there's anybody here who can condemn God on his actions. Never. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. All 
through the years that the ark of God has been in the house of Adenadab. Nobody cared. When you want to serve God, better ask God, how will I serve you and you'll be pleased? Whether you are called a pastor or you are not a pastor, whether you are a member in one man or you are a member in any church, ask God, what shall I do so that I will please you? Can somebody help me? Can you get for us? First Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 and 2. First Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 and 2. And the men of Kajata came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eliezer, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. Verse 2. Everybody look up here. And it came to pass while the ark abode in that place that the time was long for it was 20 years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. I wanted to refresh our mind so that we will know the distance, the time the ark has spent in the house of Abinadab. The ark of God has spent a period of 20 years in the house of Abinadab. And the least that happened to be the one that was consecrated to take and look after the ark. Uzziah and Ahio was not involved in this commission. They were not to do anything. It was Eliezer. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, on the day they heard that the king has come to fetch the ark with the crowd, they have to dress up like I dressed up. They put on their fine linings. They dress up like handsome men. Two of them show up. They came up to help the king and the entire congregation of Israel so that they would be noticed. Any eye service is not service. Can somebody hear me? Any eye service is not what? Service. It was that that Uzziah and Ahio were being made manifest. They were manifesting in the public for the first day. They have to push behind their brother, Eliezer, and say, this day, you are not the one to go. You've been doing your own, allow us. This is our turn, this is our day. And mind you, that the service of God does not tell about age. The work of God does not tell about age. It does not tell how long you've been in the ministry, how long you've been in the service. It does not matter what you've been doing. Anything you are doing and your heart is divided. So many people are in the church, they do eye service. So many people are in the ministry, they do eye service. They pray more when the man of God is there. They come out when the man of God is there. They cover everywhere when the man of God is there. But when the man of God is not there, they will disappear. May God help us in Jesus' name. <laughs> Immediately, Uzziah and Ahio heard that king has come. They push Abinadab. They push Eliezer. And they say, today is our day. We have to do it. Ask your neighbor, is today your day? <laughs> ask somebody. Push that person. Ask him, is it your day? Then can you ask that person, how are you serving God? Because the mind you are serving with has a lot to tell. If you are not serving with a very good mind, a lot of things will happen on the way. Why they were going through a hill, just a little hill. So many people will think that why Uzziah and Ahio were killed was because they touched the ark. No, God was not happy. Because they were doing a show up. Ladies and gentlemen, deliverance is not a show up. Ladies and gentlemen, ministry is not a show up. People of God, ministry is not a show up. When God has called you, has deposited something in you. In his own time, he will allow you to manifest. 
If you want to manifest in the wrong way, he will just terminate you. He will push you away. Allow God to bring you up at your own time. If you want to show up, he will tell you, my friend, it is not your time. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. What are we seeing today? When people, when God has not promoted some people and introduced them, when God has not allowed some people to manifest, they manifest themselves. That's what we'll be seeing that most of us ministers we conjoin things and make it work. Thinking that it's God that is working. May God have mercy. I didn't hear you say amen. amen. May God have mercy. Amen. When the hand of God is not there, nothing will happen. Never. When God is not in business, nothing will happen. There will always be tumblings. There will always be stumblings. There will always be hardness. Where you are, ask God, are you there? When God manifests in reality, everybody will know. And people will know that there is God there. When Jesus in the family, is in the family, there will always be happy. But when Jesus is not there, everywhere will be full of scatter. That was what happened when Ohio that has never been part of the system came in. He did not allow his brother to walk to the end. They pushed their brother out. And Bible said, ladies and gentlemen, for 20 years, the ark was in the house of Abinadab. The children of Israel did what? Did what? Can you bring verse 2? They lamented. They suffered. There was suffering. Things were not going well. For 20 years, nobody could rise above each other. For 20 years, there was no manifestations of the sons. For 20 years, there was no divine revelations and prophecy. For 20 years, there was nothing done in good direction. For 20 years, people were living in ardent poverty. 20 years, people suffered. Because the wrong people were on seat. May God help us in Jesus' name. In your leadership, may the right people be in leader. In your ministry, may the right people be in leadership. In your calling, may you be the right person. Lot of things changed and the power changed hand because it was going on the negative side. All the time, Eliezer was there. These people were quacking him. They did not allow him chance. And when they were going to the city of David, at that particular place, there was turbulence. And the man that wanted to help God, God forbid that we should help God. In this season, in 2021, as the year will soon round up in the next five months, may we never think of helping God. May God be in front, may we follow. They followed immediately, they wanted to follow, help God. The anger of God arose. God asked them, where have you been? These 20 years, where have you been? When the ark has been suffering, where have you been? Where have you been when the ark was taken to Philistia? Where have you been when the ark was taken to the borderland? Where have you been for 20 years? You want to show up now because the king is here. Tell your brother, tell your neighbor, shake your neighbor and say, from now, don't show up. Say it again, from now, don't show up. God can use anything to work for himself. Can somebody hear me? God can use anything, anything. And I remember where he said, if these things do not worship me, I will raise stones to do what? To worship me. Don't think, because a man came in the Bible and said, they have killed all your prophets. It's left with me alone. 
Le konya na ma yin he. Le go de onye susu a. Do you think you are alone? Are you, are you the only one that fears me? Let me tell you openly, I have over 600 people that have not defied themselves. You cannot be the only man alone. There are so many others that are better than you. In God's service, do your best. Don't show up. Pastors, can we just hold our hands? Can we stand up, pastors? Can we just hold on? I'm talking about my fellow pastors. Hold your hands together and say, say with me from today, let us not show up. Let us do the work with all our hearts, with all our minds, without showing up. Because we are nothing without him. Can I hear somebody say amen? Everybody, can you stand up and join your hand with somebody? Join your hand with somebody and say with that person, just join your hands, everybody. Join your hand with somebody. Say to that person, my brother, from today, no showing up. For you are nothing without him. You are nobody without his grace upon your life. No showing up. Can I hear somebody say amen? Ladies and gentlemen, no showing up. Immediately, Ohio Bible said, God killed Uzziah. Ohio came. He died where his brother died. Why? Because they wanted to help God. They were putting their hands where they did not labor. They were trying to show up in the midst of 30,000 that the ark has been in their house. May God have mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Immediately David arose and became displeased. Not even asking God why they do do it. Bible said David abandoned the ark and 30,000 men, there was no volunteer. Everybody left. David said, this ark that I've started killing on the way will not come to my house. Onye gebu no mo me No hukura na ihe aje na aka wo ndu no hu. Onye gebu mo me gini ya buru. It will not come to my house again. Onto my city no. David left one side. 30,000 people left to one side. The guys left to one side. The singers left to one side. The ark was in the bento. Nobody to go closer because none of us was afraid to die. But in the midst of the crowd came a man that was not part of the crowd. He discovered himself that he can manifest that day. He discovered himself that he can be used of God without being showed. Can you rise up and say, I can be used of God. Say, Lord, I can be used of God. No matter the situation, I will make myself available. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Can you give me verse 10? Verse 10 of First Samuel, Second Samuel chapter 6. Oh my God. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 10. So David would not remove the ark of God unto, unto him into the city of David. Now, there's a word there. He did not do it. But it was under his permission it was done. Can you hear me now? Here, yeah, Bible said, but David carried it outside into the house of Obededon. The Gittite. David did not touch the ark. But he permitted Obededon. Obededon came and pleaded and said, Sir, I am sorry I can help in this service. Sir, I am 
volunteering myself, even if it means I die, let me die. And hear me, everybody, under this auditorium tonight. They that say, even if I die, let me die, they never die. It is only the fearful ones that die. Obedidon took the risk of his life, man of God. He took the greatest risk. Number one, he was not an Israelite. He was not a son of the covenant. He was not from the commonwealth of Israel. He was a Gittite. The ark supposed not to enter into his domain. But he came and pleaded and said, Sir, I can serve. Help me. Let the ark get into my house. I will keep the ark until the day you want to collect the ark. When the anger of God comes down, come and collect the ark. You can be another Obededon. You can be used of God. When everyone has run away, don't run away. When everyone has given up, don't give up. When there's no other person to be used, make yourself available. When others have deserted, don't desert. That was why somebody asked in the Bible, others have gone. Will you also go? It happened in the case of Ruth. Ruth said, go to your people. I don't have any person. Even if my, I'm remarried now, I'm not sure I am able to have a child. Even if I have a child, I'm not sure the child will grow to marry you. But there came a wise word from the mouth of Ruth. Ruth said and pleaded, do not plead with me to leave you. Where you die, I will die. Where you perish, I will perish. Your people will be my people. Whatever name you answer, will be the name I will answer. Ladies and gentlemen, it was upon root confession that Jesus came today. Good service brings good reward. Faithful service produces faithful reward. You can manifest when you serve faithfully. You can be the next giant in Oka. You can be the next giant in Ibo land. No matter your age in the ministry, God can lift you, lift you above your echoes when you serve faithfully. When you make yourself available. Even in the business world, your situation can change when you serve faithfully. May God have mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 11. And the act of God continued in the house of Obededon, the Gittite three months, and the Lord blessed Obededon. And what? Everybody say that. And? And all his household. That's what I want to hear. Everybody look at me. When God begins to bless, he does not bless half and leave half. Bible said, and God blessed the house of Obededon. Who was not an Israelite? Men of God, you know, sometimes we read the Bible. We try to figure out. Now, Israel. Now, the ark of God was in somebody's house for 20 years. The family was not blessed. 20 years. Abinadab. It was in Israel. It was in the house of Abinadab for 20 years. The family was not blessed. The house of Israel, they were not blessed. Nobody could give a testimony. Nobody could testify. Nobody could say praise the Lord. But the ark of God shifted to somebody's house. After three months, 
testimony came. Good service brings good reward. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter how long you have been in the ministry. When you serve well, God will bless you. When you serve with a genuine heart, you will manifest. Obey the door manifested the sonship. I am seeing Obededon, a stranger without a good house. Within, a, within the period of three months, Obededon built a house. He had no chariot that was the car of them. Within three months, Obededon had carrots. Chariots. His household changed. Everything pertaining to Obededon changed. I want to prophesy to somebody to tonight. If you serve well, everything around you will change in Jesus' name. Your household will change in Jesus' name. You will be a team of testimony. Your environment will know that somebody like you has come. Your people will know that somebody like you has come. Can you hold your neighbor and say, please serve well. Please serve well. Say it again. Please serve well. Please serve well. Please serve well. I service do not pay. It can never pay. But good service pays. It brings a definite change. It brings a supernatural turn around. Everything turn around when you serve well. Let's just go through a few things. Obededon and his household changed. Everything changed about Obededon. And in verse 12, can you bring verse 12 of the same place? Something happened. The same people that ignored the ark, they were the same people that went and began to tell, God has blessed Obededon. Look at verse 12. And it was told King David, do you know that king didn't know that Obededon had been blessed? The king never knew that Obededon was a poor man. Can everybody hear me? They will only see you when you are poor. But when you begin to grow, when things change, they begin to say a lot of things. Serve well. They went and reported to the king that Obededon and his house had been blessed because of the ark of the Lord. Thank God they said he has been blessed because of the ark of the Lord. Then the king rose and said, if Obededon was, did not die, let us go. Nobody will die again. Why, why not you stand as a sacrifice? Huh? Why not you stand in the church as a special person? As a lamb for sacrifice. I want to prophesy to you. No matter what happens, you will not die. Be exemplary. Be a different person. Let your case stand out. They told the king of Bethlehem and his household had been blessed because of the ark. And king said, let's go. Very soon. I'm saying, may you come and see my blessings very soon because of good service. Yes, so I will follow to come and see your blessings because of good services. When you serve well. Oh, there's a saying in my place. Oh, there's a saying in my place. And I was also told, You don't just stay without work and you want a reward. God forbid. If you want God to bless you, stand up and walk. If you want God to bless you, be a different person. Obey the Lord, did not look at shame. He did not look at his non-entity. He was nothing. He said, give me the ark. Let me take him to my mud house. My house is not good, but I know that God will show me mercy. After three months, God showed him mercy. He became a testimony. 
instead of being a curse. You will never be a curse in the name of Jesus Christ. And the king arose and went for the ark. Those people that rejected you, any moment from now, they will come to look for you. You believe that? If you believe that, stand up and say, Amen. They will begin to look for you any moment from now. Testimonies about you will change everywhere. People will begin to celebrate you any moment from today. Because of good services. Serve well. Don't look at environment. Don't look at situation. Don't look at where you are. Even if you are living in one room, turn your one room to be a center of service. God will bless you out of it. There's something that happened. Let us look at result of good services. Result of good services. Serving well brings blessing both to you and to your master. And here I want to say something. Everybody hear me. It is unfortunate that the people that people are regretting to give work today are Christians. I say it again. It's unfortunate to say that people are regretting to give work to Christians. For instance, our brothers and sisters that have a thread, a Christian sister that is a tailor, give her work, give her clothes to sew. You will never get it in the next three months. She will be full of excuses. Give a brother that is a carpenter work. You have cause to have work. His own estimation will be the worst. He will even cheat you, buy things that are not real to work for you. Give a Christian mess and work. He will do everything to bring the house down and to cheat you over and over. But give unbeliever, he will fear your God. He will respect you. Christians, because we pray together, we speak in tongues together, we do everything together, there's no respect, there's no regard. May God have mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Can somebody open the book of Genesis chapter 30 for me? Genesis chapter 30, verse 27. What happened? A Christian was sent somewhere. Genesis chapter 30, verse 27. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in your eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Joseph, I mean Jacob, served Laban well. And Laban was able to testify about the good services. Even though that there were little things that old Jacob did. But because of the numerous results, this man did not remember them again. Ladies and gentlemen, serve well wherever you are. If you want the blessings of God to manifest upon your life as a son, serve well. If you are in the choir, do the work in the choir well. If you are an usher, do the work of an usher well. If you are in the committee of the conference of anything, do it well. If you are a pastor, manage well. Whatever thing that has been entrusted and handed over to your hand, don't you speak in tongues? Manifest well. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Not only that, ladies and gentlemen, can we look into that? Laban said, look at everybody, look at that verse again. Laban said, I have learned by experience. Mark that line. I have learned by experience, not what I had, that the Lord has blessed me because of you. Wherever a Christian is, he's supposed to be a blessing. Not a setback. Not a curse. You are good work will bless the household of your master. Your good work will lift up everybody around you. I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed my family because of you. How many people can say that about you? 
How many people, so many of our apprentices today, somebody is given to do a thread with somebody to be settled in seven months, I mean seven years. By four years, he will begin to pitch. I have learned it. I want to go on my own. Nobody wants to serve. Then to some Christian brethren who have gotten servants who are serving under them. After four years, five years, on the sixth year, they will declare that person a thief. They will find fault so that they will chase away that person. But I've learned by experience that the Lord has blessed my family because of you. May the Lord have mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis chapter 39 verse 5. Another man that God blessed. Another family that was experienced the blessing of God because of somebody. Genesis chapter 39 verse 5. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Why? Because somebody that had the servant's house, somebody that has the house, a heart of service has come. Somebody that has come to manifest sonship has come. And in the house of Potiphar, the Lord turned everything around because of Joseph. Can somebody's office be blessed because of you? I didn't say, say amen. I say, can somebody's office be blessed because of you? Can somebody's business be lifted because of you? Can somebody's family be blessed because of you? May the Lord bless you because of some, may the Lord bless somebody because of your services. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, child of God. If you are not a blessing to somebody, you are a curse. If you are not a blessing to somebody, you are a curse. In the generation in which we are, we are supposed to be blessings to people around us. May we be blessings unto our neighbors. May we be blessings unto the members of our church. May we be blessings unto people in the society. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Can you give me final place? First Chronicle chapter 26. What happened to Obededon? What happened to Obededon? Because we are talking about benefit of service now. Chapter 26, First Chronicle. First Chronicle chapter 26, verse 4. Verse 4 to 8. First Chronicle chapter 26. Everybody look at this. And after seeing this, you'll be shocked. Look at that. Moreover, the sons of Obededon were Shammai the firstborn, Jehozebad the second, Joab the third, and the Sarkar the fourth, and Nathanael the fifth. Verse 5. Amiel the sixth, Isaac the seventh, put you at the eighth, for God blessed him. Eight able sons, for God blessed him. Verse 6. And also unto Shema his sons were born that ruled throughout the house of their father for they were mighty men of value. Verse 7, they were mighty men of value. Verse 7, the sons of Shema, Optinia and the Raphael and Obed, Elizabeth, whose brethren were strong men, Elihu and Shamek. That verse 8, listen, oh, everybody mark this in your Bible. And all this of the sons of Obededon, they and their sons and their brethren, able men for strength, for the service, were three score and two of Obededon. How many? Sixty-two. A man that has no name at the beginning has become somebody. Has become mighty because of commitment. How again do you think a son can be manifested? May God cause us to manifest. May God cause us to serve well. May God cause us to be in the front of every service. From now, may you give yourself to the service that 
Nobody, even if people are pulling you back, you say, no, I must serve with all my strength. Obey them on and his sons. His sons alone, not daughters, we are 62. Obedidon and his grandchildren, if you add Obedidon, they are now 63. But all the male child in his family were 62 because the Lord blessed him. The blessing within three months at numbers the blessing of 20 years. God is ready to bless somebody tonight. God is ready to take away the captivity in your life tonight. God is ready to take away the curse in your life tonight. God is ready to take away that sorrow tonight. God is ready to lift you tonight. God is ready to bless you in a position that people will begin to envy you. Shall we stand up? You will become a person that everybody will be envying because of good service. Hold somebody. Hold somebody's hand. Say with me, oh God, from tonight, I want to be a blessing. I want to serve well. I want to manifest. I want to be a testimony. From today, may I become a, a, a pillar in this organization, in this ministry. May I become a pillar that people will begin to envy me. From today, may my household experience your blessings. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? Thank you, Father, for your word. Father, oh God, there is a blessing and there are blessings in serving you, in manifesting. May we see the blessings. May we never join the household of Abinadab. May we be like the household of Obededon that will enjoy and at the end, we will say, yes, our God has blessed us. In the name of God, the Father. In the name of God, the Son. In the name of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.